commission that needs to take a break to do that, but we're going to continue. Uh, and uh, let's see, uh, report of the chair, uh, announcements from the chair, uh, veteran service report. Uh, that is on your desk, and all you need to do is to uh, we recognize that. Uh, we do have uh, we do have uh, uh, we do have on the agenda tonight uh, a zoning uh, issue, a rezoning request. Uh, no one has signed up for this, so there's no one to speak to this. So uh, you see that that is a request to rezone the Timothy, uh, the, the property there, and. Uh, the uh, clerk will now read that to us. There we come to the Public Hearing Public County Commission meeting January 26, 2015 at approximately 7 p.m. This meeting will be held in the Sumner County Administration Building and Commission Chambers, 355 North Dover Drive, Alpha, Tennessee. MPA Holland, E. Tux, and Jerry C. Gillum, E. Tux, are requesting to rezone their properties located at 2559 Highway 25W, Cottontown, Tennessee from agricultural to commercial to land new development. Subject property is located on tax map 79, a portion of the parcel uh, 29.02 and parcel 29.04 respectively containing 1.58 acres in our zone agriculture. Common request located in Summer County Planning Office, Stormwater Department, which is located in the Summer County Administration Building. Anyone having interest, desire to comment, or ask questions concerning this request, is invited to attend the meeting. Was there anyone in the audience who came just to talk on that? There's no one that signed up. Okay, if not, then uh, I need a motion. So mm -hmm. move. Right, we have a motion for Mr. Taylor to need a second. Second. Uh, second for Ms. Shell. Uh, any questions? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Becker. I'd like to maybe hear from the, the what district this is, there the commissioners. That, that did, just to get their opinion. It would be in uh, Highway 25 W in Cottontown. That really on the way down. So it could be any district. It's so, Commission District 4, Mr. Chairman. District 4. Okay. I'm kind of okay. <laughs> You're okay. All right, good. All right. So there's a motion. There's a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Public like sign. That is unanimous. Uh, general Sessions Judge. Let me say that we looked at moving the General Sessions Judge up because I know some of you were here for that, but we did not do that because uh, we thought there may be people who might speak to that, and so we could not put that before public uh, comment. So the General Sessions Judge now is there, and uh, what we will do at this point is that we will take nominations from the commissioners. Uh, remember, the Bar Association has given us three names, Alan Emley, Mike Carter, uh, and Tommy Boyer. Three uh, attorneys who will uh, uh, who will automatically uh, be invited to come to the forum, uh, the forum to be established uh, by the county attorney. Uh, after we get the list of names and we get uh, an evening uh, that uh, those people uh, can all attend, uh, and we will send out an email to you, we'll send out information to you, uh, letting you know about that, and we would encourage you to come to that. Uh, we will give them an opportunity to. Uh, to speak about themselves, tell us why they want the, uh, the job as general session judge, and uh, then uh, there will be questions that can be asked uh, by uh, the commissioners. So uh, with those three names, uh, I ask if there is anyone uh, who would like to make uh, a nomination, if you will uh, get into the queue, and I see that uh, Mr. Mr. Boltaire. Okay, go ahead. Chairman, I spoke forward and briefly to this. I you know I respect all the candidates that were nominated by the board. I you know, I can't understand tonight how we're moving forward with this when we don't know what it's gonna cost. Nobody can tell me what it's gonna cost this year, next year, next year, or the next. And we, we haven't had, you know, you're doing something without knowing what it's going to cost. So I move we defer this. Okay, there's a move to defer. Is there a second? Second. It was a second. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Aiken. Uh, all right, so we have a motion second. Uh, discussion? Oh, that's not debatable. Uh, I've been told. Okay, that is not debatable. So, uh, you want to put that on the board? Yes. All right. That 
that the motion to defer the matter is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-three votes are entered. Anyone not voting wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving four affirmative votes, motion to defer fails to carry. Okay, next in the queue is uh, Mr. Graves. Uh, Mr. Graves. Mr. Chairman, I would like to uh, nominate Jim Hawkins. All right. Jim Hawkins. Okay, uh, Mr. Foster. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, George Hussein is a constituent in my district and he's asked me to place this name for consideration. Okay. Spell it. D U T A N E. Okay. All right, Mr. Driver. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Devin Sutherland. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, on January the 5th, the special committee met. 
uh, Dr. Phillips presented the, uh, the architectural and the engineering costs for the renovations in phase one. And we pass it on to the budget and it's on the budget agenda for tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Highway Commission, uh, Mr. Graves. Mr. Chairman, I have one resolution. It's 150102. It's the adoption of the road list that we do every year, updating if there's any changes to it. And uh, I so move. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second from Ms. Bacon. Any discussion? Everybody know where all these roads are? All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Like sign? Okay. That's all, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thanks, sir. Uh, General Ops, uh, Mr. Reen. Uh, no, no report, sir. Thank you. Uh, Public Service Committee, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman, report. Thank you. Uh, Emergency <laughs> Services Committee, uh, Mr. Guthrie. I'll call Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> The ad hoc committee will be on January the 8th that is going to study the uh, potential merger of the city of Portland and Sumner County to construct a um, uh, fire hall and uh, ambulance uh, station. Uh, that was a, a very beneficial uh, meeting. Um, and it should have been uh, forwarded to, uh, to all the commissioners. If not, I apologize and I'll get that done. However, this will be taken back to the respective bodies. I hope it's further approval. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Guthrie. Uh, Legislative Committee, Mr. Harris. Is it working now? Is it working now? I don't think so. Here. There he is. Is it working now? Yes. 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 We can hear you. One item, Mr. Chairman, uh, Resolution 1501-03, show support the uh, current troop level at Fort Campbell and urge Congress to oppose any reductions. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Mr. Harris? That's it. Thanks, sir. Uh, Rules and Procedures Committee, uh, there's no report from that. Financial Management Committee, uh, Mr. Langford, we had an item that was moved under the Financial Management. Uh, yes, Mr. yes, Mr. Chairman, we uh, <coughs> we added to the agenda to shift item 1501-16 from budget to financial management. And there is an issue with our E911 building with the uh, architect's contractor. There's a further issue with the grant money because it's run out and we have to repay the full $2 million. Uh, there is litigation, which the law director can speak to if necessary. But more or less what this does, the state has allowed us to uh, redo the architect fees and take that out of the grant. If you, if, if you look on the document in front of you, the CDBG is the $1.69 million is the, uh, is the grant. It's allowing us to uh, to cover the architecture fees to uh, to uh, redesign the E911 building to start the process uh, rather than lose the two million dollar grant we received from the state. All right. So there's a motion. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Harris. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, uh, like sign. Good. Uh, we got an extension from Mr. Monte. Uh, all right, budget committee, uh, Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm just looking. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, 1501-04 uh, and 1501-310, one has on the list, that is the art and professional fees. Uh, they're all one and the same, but they're listed specifically just because of the bond. Okay. All right. We have a motion to group and approve from Ms. Lamar, a second. One item from Mr. Foster. And which item do those? 1501 04 through 1501 10. One item 7. 1 through 7 on the new side. All right, we have a motion and a second. Now we are open for discussion. Uh, Mr. Volta. This will relate to this. You had spoke earlier that when we got to this, and the budget part of the agenda, you have to speak to things related to the tax increase, and this is related to the tax increase. When you were sworn in, you asked us to do our due diligence. And studying the meetings, and studying the facts, and studying what's going on. After the special call meeting on November 3rd, I knew how upset everybody was going to be. I knew what kind of pushback we were going to get. So I did my due diligence. I called the county attorney. And I asked that it be placed on the normal November budget agenda. She said the finance director does that. 
we need to contact the finance director's office. I contacted the finance director's office, and I was told that the chairman would have to place that on the budget agenda for November. Well, in the meantime, the chairman called me and said he wouldn't get any calls opposing him if I had a problem with it to give him his phone number. The chairman, which chairman? Of the budget committee. Of the budget committee, okay. So I did that. Okay. And I've been very upset by the tax increase. If you were here that night, you know I was. You know I was not. <coughs> the people I represent are very upset. They're not against schools. They're not against the increased services or providing the services that we currently have. They want us to live within our means. You can, you can put money into something so long. And what I learned in economics class was you reach the law of diminishing return. No matter how much money you invest, you get to a certain point to where your return diminishes. Basically, they're telling us to live within their means. Yeah, I've been fighting against the tax increase. I've been fighting for the people's right to speak. I did that in due diligence, like you asked me to do. I got another problem. I was told tonight, due diligence doesn't tell me tonight that I'm going to be part of a video trying to twist my words and make it look like I'm saying something I'm not saying. Because the way we're spending money, you can twist these words. The way we're spending money, your taxes is going to get raised to you. The way we're spending money, you can't keep spending money. And you can't keep raising taxes on the people. They get tired of it. I think they spoke loud tonight, but they're tired of it. I try to listen to the people I represent. People down here, I know them in my party. You can sit over and make those little comments all you want. Give me dirty looks. That's fine, Mr. Chairman. It's not necessary. Well, it might not be necessary. Some of the other things going on aren't necessary either. Go ahead, that's still happening. Go ahead. Again, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to do my point of order. Mr. Taylor is very concerned with other commissioners using his name, but then he wants to call out. I didn't call out. I didn't call anybody to name. Okay. You want to get your point of order right, get your point of order right. I didn't mention anybody. I think I have it correct. Mr. Lane, let's go ahead. Mr. Taylor, good job. Well, I did. Okay. Are, are you trying to make a motion or are you, I mean. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to defer the rest of the items on the budget. Okay, so you made a motion to defer the items. Is there a second? Okay, I hear no second. Uh, we'll move on. The motion on the floor is to defer the items. Okay. Yeah, we're back to the queue, and the motion is that we approve items one through seven. Mr. Paul.
pressure. It took a lot of courage for these folks to come up here and make their point in front of this body, especially in front of hundreds of people. So I just hope and pray that that's not something we continue to do in the future. Okay. Um, Speaking to the motion now. Uh, are you getting it? Because yeah. I gave everybody an opportunity. I, I told them we'll speak about the video. I'm still not finished. Okay, go okay. ahead. Um, the, uh, you know, as far as, as, far as the, uh, our, our budget goes, I, I'm going to tell you something, folks. The government for 30 some years, uh, we're going to get, we will really spend money. And there's a lot of government employees, and you, you know that's a fact. If we allocate the money, we will spend it. But there is a bottom to that barrel someplace. Uh, I would just hope, hope that in the future our, our, our folks up here might get a little bit closer. I think we should have given out the notices a lot more. I think we should have told people, hey, we're going to be doing a tax increase on this day. Um, I'm hoping, you know, I, I propose this in the past quietly, but I'm hoping that people will listen to what I heard tonight. And what I heard tonight is I heard senior citizens, I heard people up here that came up here that barely could walk, that were suffering. Now, there's no one that's taken this, this position uh, seriously in the past, but I wish we would at least consider it. And I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not asking for a motion. I'm not asking for Consider the fact that if we really want to increase the revenue of our county without putting an undue burden on the rest of the county, and this is going to sound weird, but all we have to do, folks, is freeze the tax on the elderly. What happens then, and I'm in real estate, I see the people moving to Florida. I see the people coming to Tennessee. I've sold to people who go out there and they stop in Tennessee and they love the fact when they get here that the property taxes are so low. If you freeze those taxes on the government, let me tell you what's going to happen. They're going to bring disposable income to our area. Rather than moving on down to Florida, what they're going to do is they're going to stop here in Tennessee. They're going to see the environment. They're going to see what they love. And what, what's going to happen is we're going to bring their disposable income. We're going to bring their tax dollars here. And guess what? They're not going to bring. Not going to bring students to educate. So my point is, folks, is you really want to look for alternatives in raising tax, raising revenue. There are alternatives out there other than raising taxes. I wish that we could support a, a referendum at some point, sit down at the state level, that we would actually be able to. Um, Minimize tax increases. In other words, have it so that it goes over a certain point, we put it to referendum. That way we're actually doing what the citizens want when it comes to property taxes. And Mr. Chairman, I wonder what you're doing. I'm sorry, what did you say? What we have? What? Well, I mean, are you, you, you haven't spoken to the motion yet. Well, what, what was the motion? The motion about? is to group and approve one through seven and what? approve the. Uh, I would no, like to, what I would like to do is I'd like to get a little bit more information on those those uh, uh, items that we're going to be doing. I, I, all I've got in here is we're going to have architect fees and for um, things that, you know, we don't have any itemized list of what we're going to do. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to go ahead, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, this is strictly 75% uh, of the ARC fees that is in phase one of the school project that, that, that's been through about, including ad hoc committees, about four sets of meetings, and the, the budget has been presented to us for about three months. Uh, and that, but this is strictly the professional fees that this one motion. Okay, does that answer your question, Mr. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hanton? Yes. On uh, our architectural fees, what I remember is usually runs about five percent, and that includes the engineering. It, it looks to me like that these the numbers are higher than that. Now I'm sure that's easy to explain because it's a remodel, and you don't know what you're going to get into. I'm just saying that that everybody needs to take a look at this. Now, I don't know whether I don't know whether we bid these. I don't know whether we have a firm we just take a hand them to and they give us a price. And, and if somebody would would answer that. I appreciate that. I don't believe really, we we don't have to we don't have to quote professional fees. I don't think I think that's right. We, don't, we do not have to. It, it, but it might be good sometime to try it and just see how it turned out. See what we can save on any money. Now I know we've got one architectural firm that we use a lot. That's probably a good thing because you get one set of plans from him and you can you can step over here and build another school building with the same set of plans. You don't have to go back and pay them. Full amount again, but but it just it, it appears to me that uh, 
if we're talking about uh, what one point four million that close to what the total is it one point four million <clears throat> we could uh, we could have an awful awful nice young architect set to have up here in the ceiling of this building one point four million. I suspect we could pay an architect and a draftsman and buy him this paper a whole lot cheaper than that. And, and we're those we're just beginning. We're just beginning to spend money. And, and, I mean, we got the money, the needs there. We'll obviously spend the money. And, and everything that pops up, we uh, we call an architect. We call an architect to see what the, what the judges' chambers are look like. We're gonna okay, every, everything comes up. We call an architect to see walls are looking there or not. So let's uh, let's determine to look at some of these professional fees. See if we can move the money out of the expense category over it back into the budget that they come out of and use them for something else. That's all they want. Because I'd like somebody to explore those fees before we just accept them. And maybe they already have it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to add to do that. You know, um, obviously, uh, Mr. Long can speak to this as well. But the, uh, this is just a percentage of the professional fees that we have to do. Uh, it can be using the jail and other things as an example. Everywhere we have not used an architect and done the new buildings, uh, it has been uh, in the budget, so to speak. Um, and 15, we're going to, uh, and these are fees that are up to some of the expenses. We're going to end up with a motion here in a few minutes, uh, 19, uh, as relates to paying back. Uh, these fees and uh, Mr. Long, uh, Mr. Long wants to add to that. Resolution 150119 is actually set to cover the cash flow for these architectural fees and the land purchase. We have an option on if the bonds are not issued quick enough in any county's architectural fee. Right. School. 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 Mr. Hope, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Hope, Mr. Hope, Mr. Chairman, not to not to go too long. I just, uh, as my student said eloquently before, um, I know there were some public comments made earlier about us not needing to renovate our old schools, but. I, I can attest with the number of long-term problems we have at White House High School. It's uh, closing in on 40 years old. It's, it's definitely needed. Um, I can remember one of my early memories when I was about seven or eight years old. I, was sitting in, I got, in, got in a fight with another boy walking over from uh, Hunter Middle School to Beach High School, and we were taking Mr. Hyde's office. And Mr. Hyde was forced to reconcile two poor prayer boys fighting. Um, I'm not a young man anymore, so that gives you an extent to the... Uh, and I'm sure Mr. Hyde can attest to the fact too that the, the, the office suite at Beach High School is somewhat tight and, uh, uh, and, and needs, some, needs some renovation work as well. Uh, the main reason I need to stand up is that as principal of White House High School, I have an indirect conflict of interest in tonight. I'll be voting my conscience. Okay. Mr. Palmer, off the decisions. Well, it's, uh, it's been a long night. I know that uh, after midnight, when I'm talking, nothing good happens. And, uh, but. Uh, the people that are still here, I think, are people that want to know the truth. And if I've had to listen to people go down rabbit trails, and I'll take my turn um, to get the facts as I see out there about this and why we should group this together and what's kind of taking place. Uh, for the record, this commission is sitting in front of you only voting on one budget, and that was the uh, school board budget. Uh, all of the other budgets that were passed were passed last summer by sitting, uh, some of them are returning, some of them are no longer here. They opted not to address the tax rate issue. I don't, can't imagine why I've been here tonight. Um, but the only budget I had a chance, and this body had a chance to vote on, was the school budget, which I would like to know that that budget passed 19 to 3. And I can see why the folks in this county are upset, because you don't have any idea what to believe. How could you? How could something pass 19 to 3 in October? By the way, I voted no to that budget. I believe there's a clip to that on there. How could you know what to believe? When I look across the way and see the commissioner from District 3 who called the doctor of uh, schools up here and made a skeptical, put on a great doctor pony show, then voted for it. 
Then two days later, went on social media and said the citizens of this county have been held hostage by the director of schools and the commissioners vote for this. I see a lot of reasonable people that want to know the facts. You answer me how you vote for fourteen million dollars in increased spending. Everything going on. What's that got to do with this law? Yeah. Because it's about schools. Okay. That was a school budget. Now you get that. Give me your point. Give me your point. I'm going to get to my point. I'm going to get to my point. I'm going to get to my point. I'll speak. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Commissioner. So, anyways, how could you know? Uh, I've seen other commissioners who say this can be so well. I'm going to get to Yes, sir. I don't have anything to do with architectural fees. I'm getting there, sir. Everybody else will have to get there. When you talk to me, you talk to me. Personal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I would. Thank you. If you're giving about this district three, you pointed at me. I, I, just, you said, me? I just said, Commissioner, yes, sir, I'm not going to break the rules. Yes, sir. Uh, anyway, Mr. So, so, some things get offensive. Uh, sorry. Uh, I've heard people say that we're so wealthy, there's no reason that people, certain parts don't have water, and then the very next meeting say, Mr. Uh, Roy, I'm getting, getting there, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I, I've sat here for six hours in this contest. And then if I'm not talking about one order, I've been sitting here 30 minutes. I punched my button for him, my wife. No, sir. No, you didn't hear it. Facts are this. I don't think you're sitting up here. Facts are this. Go ahead. Anyways, so let's just go. Uh, the foot's on the item is group of judges from architectural fees on a school proposal that uh, needs to be done. There are some problems that need to be addressed. We have to start. It's been going on for three years. Another commissioner, uh, we had an issue at a school this week, called me and said, we have a huge problem. Actually, I called him to discuss the problem. He goes, Kevin, we got a huge problem there. We need turning lanes. We need to get people off shoots lane. It's a, it's, a, it's a safety hazard. I informed him that that was in this phase of things he voted no against. I would thank you that you would want your commissioners to know what they about yes or no against whether you agree with them or not. Uh, so, should we group these things together? Yes, we should. We've been kicking this can and putting on this theater for these people for three months. Uh, facts are facts. You have to ladies if you're going to spin them anyway you want to. Uh, but this is, at some point, the re we are the reason why people are out here yelling in the hallways because people just want to play games instead of actually do what's best for the county. And uh, I voted no for that school budget. I voted for the increase, and I'll vote on some other things. I try to take everything issue by issue, but we need to group these together and move forward with this project. It's been talked about in Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bill uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I ran as a county commissioner uh, based on the improvement of schools in Summer County. Uh, in addition to our schools, that we all know by nine portables and guild elementary is, is uh, and, and the school was all over, so it's just unbelievably um, too much. This is an opportunity for us to take a chance and improve, improve not take a chance, improve our schools, improve the marketability of our county to attract new people, to and, and quality people, and then quality businesses. Um, the studies out there show that quality of the schools uh, directly affect the quality of the, of the people there and, and the crime rates, the better the schools will be the crime rate. And I'm all for improving the schools and moving on with this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an indirect uh, copy to answer. So I'll be voting my conscience. Okay. Uh, Mr. Graves. Mr. Chairman. I kind of lost my train of thought, thanks to one of my fellow commissioners. But I hadn't lost it all. We talked about the elderly people. In this county, thousands of them might lose their house. They may not. They may figure some ways to get some more money. This is part of these architectural fees is part of the tax increase. Hey, Alexander Funeral Home, do you think this is right? Their taxes went from 11, with their price, went from $1,700 to $23,900. Facts. My property taxes went up 40%. I'm going to pay them. I, I looked at my appraisals earlier. They were 17, 18%. Well, I'm going to live with it. And then we have a commission that passed a tax increase of 24%. It puts a burden on my family. My mom and dad is 82 years old. Hopefully, just turned. 
They're part of that group. And I agree with Commissioner Vaughn about putting a tax freeze for all of the senior citizens. We don't have people losing their houses. I don't have any. I don't have that crystal ball. But I've had hundreds of calls and emails. I've had some forward to tax increase, no doubt. I've had, I've had hundreds of emails. I've had people talking, calling me on the phone. Some commissioners don't answer their phones. What I've been told. My phone is open almost 24 hours a day. But I, I am ashamed of this commission of not being open, uh, uh, not hiding behind closed doors, but not being open with the public. That's what I'm ashamed of. I'm ashamed of myself. Maybe I didn't talk to enough people. I sat here and didn't say anything. But it's wrong to treat the citizens this kind of life. These architectural fees, I've supported schools for eight years. I get tired of hearing. Some of these commissioners, some of the citizens have said the past commission didn't do anything. Had built nothing. How many school you stood for built by? How many millions of dollars did we put out on the table? I know this is bringing up history, but history is part of it, every day. We need to be open and transparent. The, the industrial part could be a good thing. I don't know. But my constituents don't want it. We're going to talk about that later. I'm sorry, I couldn't get off on that. But, but the architectural fees, I support the schools. But comments like my fellow commissioner, not mentioning no name, y'all heard him. He pointed at me, looked at me. I didn't have nothing to do with putting this on these architectural fees on here. I don't know if they brought my name up. I ain't talked about him. Okay. Thanks, sir. Mr. Guy. Yes, first I'd just like to say that I have an indirect conflict of interest and I'm going to be voting my conscience on this. Um, we've had a couple people ask some questions about the budget and uh, I would like to ask just one here, if I can be brief on it. Um, by statute, this might be something for later. By statute, when was the uh, tax rate supposed to be set? No later than October yeah. 1st, but it was supposed to be. It was supposed to, you cannot set it until July 1, and then you were supposed to set it as soon thereafter as practical state statutes. Say October 1, but because we didn't have one set. I've got that. So, if the previous commission had set the tax rate, we wouldn't be having this conversation tonight. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Not necessarily. Yeah, we could have changed it. We, we, we could have changed it. Okay. Uh, Chris Tucker. Mr. Mr. Chris Tucker. Yes, sir. I just didn't get these in earlier. Um, Mr. Taylor, I believe the number I've seen for the court, and this is my understanding, is the judge and any FTEs that are associated with the court or things like that was $500,000. So that's the only number I've seen. I don't have a detailed breakdown of the budget for you, sir, but I'll try and find it for you. And then um, for the other part, in regards to Mr. Bond's mention, I just want to say, just as a point of clarity, I think it's a great idea. We're going to bring that up on budget to research and discuss it at the committee meetings with uh, Mr. Long to kind of get some better numbers for everybody. So please let us know what we're with that one. Mr. Goodson. Thank you. Mr. Goodson. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of quick things. I'm, I'm going to clarify the, the actual meeting the chairman called real quick, but at least I can brought up Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the actual meeting that was called, um, regardless if the situation of the comptroller's office was correct or not, that's a side issue. Two points I want to make. A lot of people have pointed out the fact that the taxes, their taxes may have increased more than 20%. Uh, if it is more than 20%, it can only happen one way and one way only. It is coincidentally that we are also in the appraisal period. Is that not true, Mr. Long? Point of order. What's the point of order? There's a way that they can. They may be. The state is increasing green. That's why I start financial experts. Do you want me to speak up? Okay. 
if it increased more than the 20 percent then it's because one the reappraisal brought your value up more than average or there was a um, renovation or an error on your earlier assessment or the current assessment okay. so uh, and so the um, be perfectly clear um, at the direction of the comptroller's office, we were delaying setting the tax rate that was set. Um, mortgage companies, title companies, and people wanting to pay their tax cards uh, by the end of the year have, were coming to our trustee uh, in droves asking us to set a tax rate. Is that accurate? You can shake your head. She could acknowledge it, yes. Mr. Good, we, you know, and, and I understand what you're trying to do. Well, but, no, no, Mr. Chairman, but we're at a point now where we've got a motion on the floor. Where we need to we need to zero back in on that motion. And well, there's been no motion. comments about the, the, the actual meeting in from the public, so I just want to clarify that. I, mean, I know it's late, and I don't want to be, you know, one of the other person. Can you finish up real quick? I, I can't. But so, uh, at the direction of with our trustee that had come to us in a meeting with our county executive and you, um, that said we absolutely have to set a date to have this meeting on this week or we can't get tax cards out by the end of this year. It had to be that day. Uh, in, a, in a subsequent couple of days later, uh, Dr. Phillips and I, coincidentally, explained the trustee and confirmed that. So that's exactly how we got to that okay. date, just to clarify. Thanks, sir. Now, if you want to say anything to the motion, uh, Mr. Beckham, you can call a question. Thank you. We've got one more in the, in the, in the queue. Okay. Um, We've got Mr. Becker and one more. So I thought I'd give me a little opportunity to, to speak about the, you know, the tax rate uh, since we're doing that. Um, the, the one thing I just wanted to make a comment about is, you know, I've gotten several emails on, on both sides of the fence, if you will, uh, phone calls. I've had, I've had some nice um, communication discussion with people. Uh, not with an intent to um, change their mind necessarily, but at least explain uh, the reasoning why I voted the way I did. And for the most part, everyone um, got to the point where they, they understood, they still disagree, which is fine, but um, they at least understood uh, the intent at least. The, the, the one thing that, that I couldn't um, get across and couldn't ease any frustration uh, really all pointed back to the mass confusion about the um, process about property assessments. Um, I've, had, I've had constituents who uh, their property value went up um, 24 percent uh, and their, their neighbor you know next door to them top of thing um, may have only went up five percent or maybe even actually decreased and and I, I got when I, I, I shared their frustration I got one where I could not answer any of those questions so I would just like to make a comment that um, I think we as a county need to uh, look at how we can better educate myself included um, the residents of, of our county on how that property assessment actually works I had a sister here who spoke tonight she said her, her property value doubled, uh, and I believe her neighbors um, may have doubled as well. Uh, it just obviously there's confusion questions, so I think we need to do we need to put some focus on that. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Move for the question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, nobody else is left in the queue. We have a call for a question. Uh, so uh, you want to put that on board? We are. Items one through seven. Mr. Chairman, I wasn't here. I don't know what happened. I, didn't, I, uh, I just got a quick question from the back office, please. Okay, push the button real quick. Since you, it is on this motion. Yes, it yes. is. Okay, good. Thanks. I apologize. Let's for the county attorney, I think. Isn't there a process now to uh, look at different professional services like the architect and engineering. Don't you go through a process of that? Technically, no. Um, architectural fees are one of those things that you're not supposed to be in. It's one of those professional services like CPAs, like lawyers, where you choose that on the way the person's professional reputation and history and lots of different issues. I thought there was a process that the state required county governments 
to do now. That's with some grants, like the the Harden facility that we've talked that we're talking about tonight. That grant has some processes you have to go through where you interview architects, but that's not the general law. Okay. So then we don't have a process that or do anything other than choose. Okay. Okay. Can you call the question? Yes, right. She said that there was that we could not. Is that what I understood her saying? That we cannot quote our textual figures. You can't bid on. You can't put it out to the lowest bid. You can. Yes. By state law. Yes. That's a crazy question. <laughs> yes, sir. Here we go. All right. The motion. The motion that's on the floor is to approve items. One through seven under the budget agenda. We are voting on all of those resolutions with this vote. Okay, anybody have any questions? We're, we're voting to approve items one through seven. The matter is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. Twenty-two votes are entered. Anyone not voting, wishing to vote? Anyone wishing to change your vote? Receiving twenty affirmative votes, items one through seven are approved on first and final reading. Coach okay, Good. Thank you, Mr. Fifteen oh one, fifteen oh one dash eleven through seventeen plus fifteen oh one dash sixteen. Taking that out until it was removed, and we set the budget from Commissioner Langford uh, are all carryover. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, 11 through 17 minus 16. Okay, we have a motion to approve Mr. Mark, uh, second by Mr. Foster. Uh, and say those numbers again. Mr. Chairman, that's 1501, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 17, of course, 16 was voted. Yeah, uh, 16, so it's uh, 8 through. Items 8 uh, through 14, 14 because uh, 13 has already been approved. Okay, so, all right, so we have a motion. Uh, we have a second. Any discussion? Seeing no one in the queue, uh, we will vote. The motion on the floor is the motion. The motion on the floor is to approve budget items 8 through 14, and that is. Skipping 13, which has already been approved. Resolution, uh, the vote is on the board. Is Commissioner, please record your vote. And all 24 votes are entered. Anyone not voting, wish to vote, anyone wish to change your vote? Receiving 21 affirmative votes, the resolutions are approved on first and final reading. It's good. Mr. Chairman, uh, without objection, we do uh, 1501-19 since it's a resolution on paying money back and income back to the county executive on 18. Without objection. Without objection, we can do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 1501-19 is the reimbursement agreement that we passed as unanimous, and that is strictly where we just uh, once we take the money out to uh, pay for our bond fees, uh, fees in advance, that we're actually going to pay that money back once we get the bond.
such a dire need that we have nowhere left to borrow them. Chair, I'll remind the commission uh, uh, the, from the statement that that is an accurate statement from where we were from the previous commission before the tax increase to the tax increase to the file and change it. We have generated more money. All right. Uh, there's a motion. Uh, second. Uh, let's put that on the board. The resolution is on the board. Each commissioner, please record your vote. All 24 votes are here. Does anyone wish to change your vote? <coughs> Receiving 22 affirmative votes, the resolution is approved. Okay. Uh, Mr. Governor, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Back to uh, 1501-18, uh, the appropriation of up to $250,000 to do due diligence and preliminary sale that has been mentioned. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, it's okay with you to turn over at this junction to the county executive that would want to speak to this, and I think we may have a couple of people expert-wise that want to speak to it as well. Uh, that's okay. Sir. Yes, Mr. Hope. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know we've had a long evening. Uh, what's that? Blow on it? Hold it away from it. Closer. His works a whole lot better. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight, uh, thank you, Mr. Good, for introducing me. Uh, I put on your desk a packet. Uh, in that packet, I've got several items. I guess rather than belabor the subject, I'm going to go straight to the point. You know, we've done over several years the same thing in some County. By doing the same thing, we get the same result. And that is this. We try to run as conservative as we can. This is a very desirable place to live. People move in. We have great schools. We keep investing in schools. More people move in. The more people move in, ultimately, we don't have the type tax base we need to sustain that. And so we have to raise taxes. And it starts the process over again. We have great schools. More people move in. This is a desirable area, Middle Tennessee. And we don't have the proper economic base to support that. So we have to raise taxes again. Tonight, I'm presenting you with a proposal that's an investment in our county, just like investing in our schools is an investment in our county. And what I believe this will do will drive private investment. Large advanced manufacturers are looking for sites that are shovel ready. That requires a public investment. You have to have all of your utilities in place, your infrastructure in place, the site needs to be properly vetted and state certified. Now I can tell you out of all the sites, the large sites in Tennessee, and I believe at one time there was seven, there's only one now available. That's in West Tennessee. I'm not trying to toot our horn, but the reality is Middle Tennessee is the engine that drives the economy for the entire state of Tennessee. It's the most desirable area, and we're highly sought after. To give you a prime example of what I'm talking about, the metropolitan region, which includes Sumner, Wilson, Rutherford, Williamson, Davidson, and we just added Robertson County, which is small. We, today, we have around one and a half million people Projections are, in 25 years, and these are conservative projections, we're going to have over 3.5 million people. 
Why? Because people want to move here. The quality of life's great. Taxes are low. I believe if we change the dynamics and we invest in this region, this will be a windfall for Sumner County. We've never done that. We never had the vision to do that. I've heard from a lot of people why it won't work. But let me tell you, this is not a gamble. This is an investment. And like all investments, there's a certain amount of inherent risk. But that's why I've had the professionals come in, study this area, and they've given me the green light. This area would be able to accommodate a two million square foot footprint. To put that in perspective of what we're talking about, Volkswagen in Hamilton County, in Chattanooga, sits on a 1.9 million footprint. As you can see from the packet, what the economic impact has been for that area. We need jobs and we need high paying jobs to build our tax base that has ramifications all over the county. It increases our retail tax base. It makes us very desirable in all communities for spinoff industries to come in to basically support that large industry. I know many of us in all the communities want high paying jobs for our citizens. So tonight, I've assembled a team and I'd like for them to speak on specifics and I'd ask them to come up if that's acceptable, Mr. Chairman, and speak at the mic. I've got Mr. Jimmy Johnson with Ford Sumner. I've got Reggie Mudd with State ECD. I've also got Jim Harrison with uh, Civil Site Engineering and Charlie Lyon, which is the director of Four Lake. And if you gentlemen come up, stand together, and make your presentation. Tonight I'm here to tell you that uh, Summer County and the National Market is a place of destination. Uh, I-65 is fast becoming the automotive corridor uh, south, but tonight I would like to concentrate on State Route 109, uh, the transportation corridor which is being completed in lieu of I-840 North. Uh, the corridor will run from the new I-65 exchange in the Kentucky State Line through Summer County and connect with I-40 and I-840 in Wilson County. When State Route 109 is completed, the state will have invested some $250 million in this road project. Uh, this is a state route 109 is obviously a growth in, in jobs quarter and a designated quarter for freight and goods movement. Growth is going to happen in this quarter. One of your, on one of your handouts is a chart projecting population and employment growth over the next 25 years in these two counties and these three direct cities that will be directly impacted. Uh, I energy tonight is an exciting and uh, forward-thinking opportunity uh, to begin the delivery process, the delivery, the delivery process of developing a jobs center, an enterprise center, and the heart of the state 109 corridor. It's very much an opportunity to lay claim to intentional development and claim the jobs growth business within Southern County. What we'd like to see is a one-of-a-kind, one supersized uh, enterprise park, industrial park uh, in Southern County. We want a summer county site that's complementary to the existing private and public sites that we have, the excellent private and public sites that we already have. Uh, this will begin a very deliberate process that will be involved to develop and establish a, a select Tennessee certified site. Uh, the target market, as mentioned, will be advanced manufacturing, looking for an individual project, either for the transportation equipment, uh, electronic manufacturing, other devices, uh, pharmaceutical. Hi, uh, Mr. Reggie Mudd of the Department of Economic Development. Give us a few more specifics. Yeah. Um, a 
think the comment is very favorable for this. Tennessee just uh, finished up a record year, creating 24,000 jobs in the state. Uh, more than 8,000 of those jobs were created in this 10 county region. So obviously we're getting our share. Uh, we looked at 55 different projects in this 10 county region last year uh, that had a potential of 9,600 employees, uh, a billion, 400,000 in, in combined investment, and more than 7 million square feet. So the, the market's very favorable, it's very bright for, uh, for this area. Uh, the one thing that we are short on is we need a lot of these sites are good large sites that have good rail access and have um, the right utilities, water, uh, gas, sewer. Uh, so these are all things that we think would be built into this. The other thing, the Greta plant has put Sumner County on the map. Uh, my co-worker was at a retired Tennessee uh, conference. Uh, it would be she was representing Tennessee at a retirement conference uh, in Philadelphia or somewhere a couple weeks ago. A gentleman came up and said, I want to know about Gallatin, Tennessee. She said, well, Gallatin, well, Summer County is not in the Retired Tennessee program, which we'll talk about later. And he said, well, if it's good enough for Greta, it's good enough for me. So we have that name out there now, and it's a good time to capitalize on that. Um, the only uh, county that's really done a great job of this in recent years is Montgomery County, uh, Clarksville, uh, and they've gotten more than their share of projects uh, and most recently landed the $1,680 uh, uh, million uh, hand cooked plant. So we think that the future is bright. It's not without its risk, but we think it's a great opportunity out there. Uh, like anything else you do, you have to do a plan. I think that's being put in place. The uh, due diligence has to be done. I think Jim's going to speak to that here right after me. Uh, but I've been in several meetings recently in other counties where people are saying, what can we be, what can we do to get us more ready for economic development? And again, these are the things that you have to do to be ready for that. Um, as County Executive Paul said, the only other site in the state of Tennessee uh, that would be comparable, comparable to this is in Memphis. Again, I think this is a very ripe area because of our our, our big fortune. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Uh, I'm Jim Harrison with the uh, Civil Site Design Group. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what should have been on your desk. Uh, you should be able to see one of these with our Civil Site logo in the corner of it. Uh, it is really an outline of how we would proceed to look at each property uh, from a due diligence standpoint. Uh, there's a, if you look at that chart, there's actually a type of column for a 100 acre site, column for a 500 acre site, and a column of 7,000, it's really more 800 to 1,000. Uh, this outline is based to, basically to identify those key components. And we would go through really a, a two-step process, the first step being early due diligence. This early due diligence will be a process which will be prior to going hard with 1% of the dollars for any property. Uh, to carefully look at a uh, preliminary geotechnical, uh, to look at environmental constraints, uh, to look at to ar any archaeological concerns, uh, to go through a phase one environmental, to go through this geometric concerns and constraints that you have. Uh, we all know you have to have good access to a site. Uh, you need to have, uh, for the multi-modal sites that we have in this specific area with railroad and you know, with a highway, with Highway 109, uh, we need to make sure we've got good access to those those uh, those key routes uh, so that we can build to the sites we're looking at. Uh, that's the first step of the early due diligence process. The due diligence process is what shows at the bottom of the sheet. Uh, it outlines a full due diligence, which would involve more soil borings, geotechnical research, uh, preliminary grading analysis. Uh, jurisdictional determinations for any kind of wetlands that we might run into, uh, floodplains, uh, looking at any of those, any, anything that would constrain or constrict the full use of the property. We want to make sure that every dollar that's spent on a piece of property is fully usable for the purpose that it's intended. Uh, let me say this, we work on a, a number of these sites. Uh, they're very rather unique because you're looking at large areas. Uh, you need to look at mass grading, you need to look at different different things that industries are going to look at. 
But the biggest thing about uh, this type of site, and the biggest thing about an enterprise site like this is that you're looking for one or two key projects, you've got to be ready. It takes time to work through these due diligence items. It takes time to work through these, these things. And if you do them on the front end, and if you're ready, when the industry comes, uh, the industry will choose to look at your community. If you're not ready, they won't, because you're not ready. Uh, so we've worked with a number of, throughout Middle Tennessee and the state of Tennessee, we've worked with key employers, we've worked with new industries, uh, we've worked with creators of highly technical jobs, like we all want to see. Uh, we've helped those companies to meet their schedule. And those schedules are so key in making this happen. So what this due diligence outline is for is to kind of give you just a, a picture. We'll be up here to answer questions if you need to. But it's really just to kind of give you a picture of how we step through that process to make sure we're careful about every dollar we spend and it's moving in that direction to open that door and place out the welcome mat, basically put out the welcome mat for those new industries and those new facilities. Mr. Chairman, I'm Charlie Lyons, and I'm the Executive Director. Uh, many of you know the Four Lake Regional Industrial Development Authority. We also go by Tennessee Central Economic Alliance for promoting the five counties in the Northeast region of the Nashville uh, uh, metropolitan area. And it is truly an honor to speak to you tonight. And what I'd like to address to you some of the marketing aspects. Uh, some of you know that I've worked in various economic positions uh, around the state, and some of you may not realize that I've uh, been very fortunate to have hundreds of hours in training in economic development institutions and uh, various uh, universities around the country. But the, uh, one of the blessed pleasures I've had is for the state of Tennessee is to travel this country from the west coast to the northeast uh, to encourage consultants and companies to look at our fine state. And what you would like to have is a company come in here and tell you that they would like to be here and they make that commitment. The companies are examining you on the website and through consulting firms where you do not realize that they're even looking at you and they are looking at what you've invested in yourselves and they're looking at what you have taken steps to do to be prepared for that. So uh, I'd like you to realize that there are companies that are being marketed from the state of Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley Authority, the Middle Tennessee Industrial Development Association, and the National Chamber actually sells this area as well as the Tennessee Central and even some other associations. When we're selling this, again, the first thing they're going to be asking is about the product. And the thing you're going to be asking about is the workforce. And you've created with your education system a fine workforce. And what I would encourage you to do is look at taking this another step because a lot of these people are having to commute, as I heard tonight, outside of the county to work. So this is not as much about land as it is about job and economic development. And this is a phenomenal opportunity that you would find if you hire a consultant out of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, you know, San Jose, San Francisco, you name it, most of them I've talked to, you'd pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars just to tell you that you need to have a product. This is a wonderful opportunity. So, thank you. Mr. Hope, do you have anything you need to add? Because we, if not, we need to get a motion and set. Yes, sir. Discussion. And I'm going to make it brief. Please. I know we're all tired and I'm tired. But I think we have an excellent opportunity tonight to do something that hasn't been done, to do something that's going to make a significant difference in our citizens' lives, to make an investment in our county. Because it's just not the county that these people are looking at, it's the entire region. And there's no capacity, there's no capacity for this, there's no supply in this region. So. If you have any further questions, I'll be happy to try to answer. Uh, I know our professionals would be also, and uh, I'm open. Mr. Hope, let me ask you this. Uh, so everybody will know, why is, it, why is it important that we do this this evening at this late hour? Well, 
if we're going to actually invest, we've got to do proper due diligence, Mr. Chairman. Let me tell you, you spend a little money and make sure before any of this money is put down or we issue bonds that this property is suitable. And then before we purchase it, go on and make sure that we do complete due diligence to make sure that we don't spend $20 million or $5 million or any amount of money on a piece of property that's not suitable for what our ultimate goal is. And that's to move us forward economically and use that to create jobs here in Sumner County. Okay, before we go any further, now that we've heard this information, I'm, we're going to have to have a motion to set for us to make that move forward. We have a motion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, since it's in budget, I've got, uh, I'll make a motion. Uh, but I'll make one, uh, let me say, one last Okay. Can we get a second? Let's get a second first. Uh, yeah. Is there a second to this? Uh, uh, second. Second. No, we have a second for Mr. Tidy. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I just want to, number one, say thanks for the experts that are here uh, tonight at this late hour. Uh, and being as brief as possible, uh, two things. Um, uh, the executive uh, and uh, another one of the city mayor tonight, Mr. Foster, uh, had a meeting, uh, meeting, and this is relevant, I think, uh, with the former commissioner, uh, Commissioner Hacker. I say that to say that we're going to lean toward the end of the and he is from Summit County, his mom still lives here, uh, Douglas Bean. Um, and um, uh, to me, that has a little relevance. Uh, when he looked at this opportunity, uh, his comments, comments of Mr. Mudd, and correct me if I'm wrong, was if Summit County could pull this off, it would uh, put us lock years to him uh, for decades to come. Uh, and I want to stress, Mr. Chairman, as has been pointed out, this is strictly at this juncture, the due diligence we're on. Buying property or going anything, we're just trying to actually do our homework. Uh, so I would uh, encourage the motion. Okay, Mr. Hinton? Yes. Th this is a, you can talk this project up and make it sound like uh, that, that we've died and gone to heaven. It may be that, it may not. What bothers me is who's going to ensure if, if, if this if this passes, if we find out this is this is a good site, and, and we proceed, what's going to be put in place to ensure that we get the right folks out there? Now, if you ain't careful, you'll get people to get all nervous and excited, and we've been sitting here six years on this site. We don't have anybody out there, and we got somebody who wants to open transmission shops, we'll let him out there. You, you, this is not for the faint of heart. If we're going to try and do this, we, we need to know, we need to tell people that are coming out there that they got to pay minimum wage plus, that they got to have permanent employees and not use temporaries. But this is, we just we just kind of thumped the lid off this thing tonight. And there's more work, way more work to be done. And I know we've got to find out whether whether it's uh, the property out there, but we don't, we don't jump down to what, $250,000 or whatever. To, to make up our mind whether we can proceed or not. But if we don't intend, if we don't intend to do it like it ought to be done, then they know you're just going to look up and down the side of the railroad track. I, would, I was hoping that some documentation or some pattern or some typical from somebody else's site could have been passed around for, for us to maybe at least look at. And I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you guarantee 10 years of time. Much of us going to be gone. Me for sure, but if I ain't, I don't know where I'm at. I almost know right now. I should have been here. Can I touch on the comment? Uh, as chairman of the, of the Finance Committee, you might get. Okay. Uh, I understand the Fisher's uh, point, and I, I don't want to speak for our, our experts or county executives. Uh, the term megasite is actually developed in Tennessee. It was not from TDA, it was nine megasites. They have certain restrictions on about how many that you can never be in a situation, uh, as was mentioned, where you uh, divide it up. Uh, as was mentioned, we only do uh, uh, TV, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Volkswagen uh, and others. Uh, and those would be restrictions in the county executive correct me wrong, that we would, if one of our studies uh, deem this is a viable project to go forward, which would come back to this commission first. Um, then we would put those restrictions in place where we would never divide it up and put like uh, all these different parks up there versus one to two max um, tenants. Uh, is that a fair statement, Mr. Jacob? <laughs> uh, 
Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman, it is. And in your packet, I've uh, included an example of Hampton County, Volkswagen, and it has the economic impact, what was projected and what it actually was. And you are so exactly right. We have private developers in this county who have exactly what Mr. Hinton mentioned. They have sites, some of them are large, some of them are small, but they're parceling those out, building spec buildings, having uh, uh, you know small manufacturing, distribution, other things like that. That is not the focus of what we're trying to do here, and that's not gonna bring the advanced manufacturing and high paid jobs like what we're trying to focus on. Because, let's be honest, we've had our professionals tell us there's no supply out there. And what we're gonna target is one or two at the most large manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, high-tech manufacturing firms with high-paying jobs. Can we, I'm sorry, can we obligate the next generation of the county commissioners? I wonder about that. I mean, we can, we can, she's, that's a hit now. That's a just we can't, we can't bid out nothing, but we can obligate the next generation. Well, I think, to answer that, I think that we can put limitations and qualifications on the site. Now, let's be honest. Nothing lasts forever. You know, I would hope, and I believe, and I trust the professionals, that we're not going to be sitting on this site 10 years or 20 years. But uh, if it happened to happen that way, and sit on it 20 years, who knows what future commission could change. I'm not going to say that anything in this world is cast in stone and stays there forever. Even the pyramids fall apart after 3,000 years. I don't know. But I will tell you this. I think this is a great investment. I think now's the time for us to do it. And uh, I implore you to look at this and at least spend, what, 50-something thousand dollars to make sure, 54, don't have my glasses on, thousand dollars so I can come back if this ch site checks out before we put any earnest money down and we do our due diligence.
that's money that won't go back into the community if that they choose to invest themselves in the community. They kind of put it up to us when we take it out of the pockets on how we choose to invest it. And they have, they have raised grave concern to me about this. Um, and it, $250,000 is what I believe. I'm reading in 1501-18. And I know, you know, based on the 20 million, 250000 that's not a whole lot. But, you know, I can probably add up the rest of the farms in my area that it's always hit. They probably pay this $250,000. But I don't want to speculate on the land deal. I'm all for bringing jobs to Sumner County. I'm all for responsible growth. But I can't, I can't play with taxpayer money like this and tell them that we just had to have this big of a tax increase. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Ball. Trying to get an energy up there, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, you know, uh, $4 million is a lot of money to me, and that's what we're being asked to uh, spend on. Um, we've been given little or no information on this whole thing. You know, so if you were going to a bank and you were going to borrow that kind of money, what you would do is they, they wanted to ask you the detailed plan of what you want to do. You want to ask you what the estimated project, uh, cost of the project is. We have no idea. We don't know what kind of cost it's going to be. They want to ask you uh, what kind of income, well, where's the income going to come from. We have no idea. What's the expected rate of return on your investment? The investment that we're supposed to be making for the citizens of Summer County, we have no idea. Uh, fast for, uh, over the past week, I asked for some information just so I could try to do my due diligence, and I've been, I've been told that I couldn't get that. Uh, you know, I've been told that I can't get contracts, I can't get options for what those signed the land. Uh, these contracts, or we, sh we should be in place for now, or some sort of option, some sort of way to secure the land should be in place from the county attorney hasn't reviewed any of this stuff. Uh, uh, planning hasn't reviewed any of this stuff. Uh, I've been asked for address, I asked for addresses of the property so I can go out and I can look and see what properties we're talking about, what kind of taxes they're already paying in, what the worth of what the value of that property is, and I wasn't given any. So uh, I've been told that the property we're looking at is farmland. Well I did go out and look at all the farmland that's sold in Summer County over the past few years. The average cost of the farmland over 100 acres in Southern Summer County over the past two years was $1,774 uh, per acre. The highest cost of any farmland in Southern Summer County over the past two years was $4,765. We're being asked to spend $20,000 an acre for a piece of farmland. Now, let me tell you something, folks. We get down to the paddock, and I've been told that you can't do this stuff. Let me tell you something. 13 votes from sell this courthouse here. So we can change anything, anytime with 13 votes. It's all nice. See. So what we can do later on down the pike, we get into the situation, and we get net deep in it, and all of a sudden, the, the, we can't do anything with it. We're not getting anybody interested in it. We don't have to develop the money. Then what are we going to do with the property? We're going to lose 75% of our investment right there. We're going to go back to that $5,000 an acre that it's worth this farm money. So that's the, that's the kind of risk. Except for saying one of the risk is a future risk. The project, in my opinion, it could be a gold mine, but also it could be a money field. We could be throwing money down this thing for decades. The loss of revenue for the county, right off the bat, would be the taxes that this, this property bring in. The development cost, we have no idea. I've heard as much as $20 million to develop this property. The debt service on this $20 million alone, if this goes forward, this $250,000 goes forward, we go to $20 million, we're looking at $1.4 million per year that we're going to be spending $28 million just to pay for the property, not the development of the property. And I'm going to tell you what I did. I did, I did call around. I did ask for some uh, look, in, uh, look around on these things. And most of these things stand back there vacant for years and years and years. So we're going to be sitting there looking at this property for years. That's what I did. If we do get interest in the property, what I also do is that when these people come in here, they're going to see you sitting on this piece of property you have to sell them for a while. They're going to tell you, well, we'd love to take the property. And that's what you like to do. You like to give it away to them. They'll come in here and they'll say, well, we want, we'll develop the property. We want you to give us the property. And then the next thing that will come out of their mouth, we are going to ask you for tax breaks. And every one of my favorite things comes through here asks for tax breaks. So how do we 
recognize the return for our crop or for the citizens' money. This isn't our money. This we're not making an investment. The citizens of Sumner County are the ones making this investment, and they're doing it involuntarily. In other words, they don't have a choice of whether to pay their property tax or not. We force them to pay their property taxes. They don't have a choice in how we invest their money once it gets up here. So I just don't make it right. There's no guarantee that this will bring employment to Sumner County. No guarantee whatsoever. Also, if it does bring uh, employment to this county, in other words, if it brings people here, there's no guarantee they're going to live here. They can live in Macon County, they can live in Robinson County, they can live in Kentucky. So how are we going to get our money from? How are we, where are we going to get our money from? Now I've heard uh, things so, uh, pitched out there about, uh, we can see uh, income is $70,000. People were coming in there working seven thousand dollars. If you don't have a job, and I don't think we send you down. I don't think we want like thirty-five thousand. Because if you look at the state of Tennessee, most of the people who work in manufacturing don't make seventy thousand. Somewhere around thirty-five, forty thousand dollars if they make that. But if they do make seventy thousand dollars, those people will be able to qualify for a house about three hundred sixty thousand dollars, three hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. If you take that. And I'm going to go through all the figures. You can figure it out yourself. 25% of assessed value divided by 100 times the tax rate. That's going to bring you to about $2,293.75. Currently, it takes about $8,100, 8181 to go back to the state uh, Department of Education website. Educate one child. We put in 34.6% of that. So if you take that, that's $2,800. $30.62. <clears throat> so if somebody comes in here with one child in one of those places, we've actually lost about $45,000 out of one job out there. We don't have the infrastructure to do this. We're going to have to depend on other places, other entities, other cities in order to get the, have the infrastructure. We don't have fire departments throughout the county. So we're going to have to go someplace just to get fire protection. I've heard people say, this is a tremendous deal. That people can from, uh, that, you know, people have been running off themselves to get this. Well, I know a lot of rich people in Summer County. And if it was such a good deal, why aren't they doing it? Why aren't they out there buying up this land and going and doing it? The same thing that we can do. And I've heard that say, well, it's too complicated. I don't think so. <clears throat> we do have alternatives out there. There are things that we can do. We can create the infrastructure. We can help with these kind of things. We can build roads. We can put in water in North Dakota County. There's things that we can do. You know, the, the, I'm sorry, I lost it. <clears throat> we can publicize and recruit these people to come into Summer County. And one, if we're not locked down, folks, we're locked down on one piece of property right now that we're going to be promoted. But if we go out there and publicize this, we get them in here. Portland is, is ready to go. Portland is ready to go in a heartbeat. Hendersonville. If we do do that interchange right there, I think it would be a huge thing for, for Hendersonville and Summer County. Gallatin is right on the road. Gallatin or Portland one of the two is going to have to provide the infrastructure. So folks, we don't need to lock ourselves in to this one piece of property here. <clears throat> well, we can go and do the same thing with private, private uh, uh, development. We can work with the state. We can work with other, other uh, private development. So if we want to proceed, if we're going to, we're going to do this, what well, I think we're going to do, we're getting the cart before the horse. <clears throat> we need to secure the property, put options on it, put contracts on it, put some sort of contingencies in the contract that says, okay, we want this property, this, we identify the property, and bring it to us. We know what kind of property we're buying. We know where the property is, who it belongs to, everything there is no way. <clears throat> we perform, we walk in, we look at the property. We walk over, we know what it is, we know what we're investing the taxpayer's money into. Put public notices out there and let the people know, hey, we're about to put a mega site in your backyard. Because what we're going to do, we're going to force the county's people to grow when it comes time to build this thing. We're going to invest a quarter million dollars into it. We're going to figure out the property. And then we're going to get out and public hearings. And we may have to have this place filled again with people coming up here saying, we don't want that in our backyard. <clears throat> and we need to complete a comprehensive business plan. In other words, we need to come up here. We need to know what the projected costs are going to be, what, where we're going to get the money from. So we're being asked.
has to spend a quarter million dollars. The taxpayers want to like folks. And I respectfully request that we don't do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for being so good. This morning? Yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go. 